Hi, hope everyone is doing great. From this point on, we will start learning about lit shaders. Lit shaders are going to be a whole new world for us. We will start learning about how object and lights interact in the scene. We will learn about the basic lighting model in this chapter and we will also learn about the rendering path. What are the different rendering paths or techniques or the workflows? So let's begin with the very basics, which is light object interaction. Suppose we have a scene in which we have an object and we have a light in the scene. The interaction between the light and the object is based on two different things. One is the light's characteristics or properties. Another is object's material characteristics. This light object interaction is called as lighting model. There have been various lighting models developed and used over the years and one of them is basic lighting model. Object surface color is the sum of four different properties. One is emissive, another is ambient, third is diffuse, fourth is specular. If you have to remember this basic lighting model, you can remember the word beats E for emissive. A for ambient, D for diffuse, and S for specular. And in the later chapters, we will understand every single properties and how four of these properties are calculated. What are the equations and how they are evolved for every single property in the basic lighting model. The lighting calculation is done in the shader. And as it is done in the shader, it can be done in two ways. It can be calculated per vertex or it can be calculated per fragment. When the lighting is calculated per vertex, it's called as per vertex lighting and the calculation is done in the vertex shader. When the lighting calculation is done per fragment, it's called as per fragment lighting and the calculation is done in the fragment shader. Now comes the rendering path. The path or the workflow or the technique followed to render a lit scene is called as rendering path. Unity supports four different rendering paths. One is the forward rendering. Another is called as legacy deferred, also known as deferred lighting. Another is deferred shading. And the fourth is legacy vertex lit. Forward rendering technique provides two different passes that we can use in our shader. One is the base pass, another is additional pass. Now let's understand in detail what is forward rendering. The idea, the idea here is to draw every mesh in the scene once for each light source and then each of these draw calls add the color contribution of the light to the final lit scene or image. For example, we have five different objects and four different lights in the scene. The 
then what happens is as we define the idea is to draw every mesh once for each light this blue light here is influencing only one object so for the blue light object one will be rendered with the blue color on it then comes the turn of yellow light yellow light is influencing first three objects so based on the light contribution they will have the yellow color then comes the turn of third light in the scene which in our example is green light green light is influencing two different objects which is second and third based on the light characteristics the object get the color influence then comes the turn of fourth light in the scene which is influencing two different objects in the ordinary conditions every single object is rendered for every single light for example if there are five objects and four lights the forward rendering will cause 20 draw calls but in a lot of engines certain optimization techniques are implemented such as in unity so only that object is drawn for a light which is influencing it so that is why in the example that we saw we only consider the lights influencing the objects and eventually all these passes will contribute to the final image if you are coming from the maya or 3d max or compositing background this process is very familiar to render different passes for different lights and then compositing them to create the final scene so that is an idea of forward rendering and as we saw that every single light in the scene increases the number of draw calls and that is the reason why the lights in the scene for the games are kept as minimum as possible in the mobile games either the lights are baked into the textures or another vastly used technique is to keep one light in the scene to keep the draw calls in the limit consider environment scene in your game which has 100 objects and every single light will add up 100 different draw calls and final count will become so huge so that is why the lights in the mobile games are kept to minimum then we will understand forward lighting passes so one pass is the base pass another pass is the additional pass so these are the passes that are defined in the shader and this is the same pass that we have been defining in our shader as so far we have been defining the tags for the sub shader tags such as q as transparency and ignore projection and render type etc in the similar way we will define the pass tag in which we will define what type of pass it is we will be defining an extra tag which is light mode and for the forward base pass we will define it as forward base and for the additional pass we will define light mode as forward add the forward base pass can render one per pixel directional light if there are multiple directional lights in the scene the brightest directional light will be used for that pass and if there is no directional light the lighting calculation will not be done plus it can also render spherical harmonics lights such as 
light probes, global illumination, and sky ambient. And if we talk about forward additional paths, forward additional paths can render one per pixel additional light that affects the object. So what does this mean? For example, if we have two lights in the scene, one is the directional light and one is the point light or the spotlight. And we want to do the lighting calculation based on two different lights in the scene. In that case, in our shader, we will have to write two passes. One pass will be forward base pass that will perform the calculation for this directional light. And we will have to write another pass which will do the calculation for this additional light influencing the object. So that is why we have different passes and if we have third different light, we will have to write additional pass in the shader. So that is what forward lighting and base pass and additional pass is. Then comes legacy deferred or deferred lighting. Deferred lighting works in three stages. One stage is render the scene into geometry buffer that contains the depth, specular and the normal for every single visible pixel. The second step is for each for each light source in the scene find the affected pixels read the corresponding geometry buffer data and calculate the light value and store that value in the light accumulation buffer so the second step is divided into four different steps first for each light find the affected pixels then read the data stored in the G buffer, which is geometry buffer. So we are reading the data for those objects that are being affected by the light and not the complete object, but we are reading the data for the portion of the object that is affected by the light. Second, based on the data read from the geometry buffer, we will perform the lighting calculation. And once we have calculated the light values, we will store them in light accumulation buffer. So this is first step, this is second step. The third step is render the scene for the second time and for the visible pixel, combine the accumulated light values with the mesh color to get the final color and then add any ambient or emissive light. So render the scene again. And for every visible pixel, combine the accumulated light value with the mesh color which is defined in the material and then any additional ambient or emissive lighting. So these are the steps for the deferred lighting. Let's understand these steps by taking an example. Consider that we have a red sphere in the scene and a yellow light and based on the camera placed in the scene the sphere this red sphere covers certain pixels of the screen so in the step 1 we said that we will we will render the scene into geometry buffer what it does not mean is we will draw this mesh onto the screen 
rendering the scene means that we will perform certain calculations and the calculations that we are performing in this step is we are storing the depth in the z buffer how far these pixels are in the z axis what are their normal values what are the specular powers of those fragment and we will store these three values in the buffers which are combinedly called as geometry buffers in the second step for each light source we will find out the pixels affected so based on this object based on the position and the shape of this object and the position of the light certain pixels of this red sphere are affected by the light so we find the pixels that are affected by this light of this mesh then we read the corresponding g buffer data stored for these pixels and based on this data we will perform the lighting calculation and we find out the light value for those pixels and after the calculation we will need somewhere to store these values as well so we will store them in the buffers which are combinedly called as light accumulation buffers so now we have the light values for those pixels in the light accumulation buffer in the third step we will render the scene without the lighting calculation so we will get this original red sphere which is the color of the mesh so we will render the scene for the second time and we will combine the mesh color plus the accumulated light value we read this value from the light accumulation buffer we will add up the accumulated lighting value plus any ambient or emissive light so these are the three steps for deferred lighting or legacy deferred lighting and deferred lighting is different from deferred shading which we will understand now